here's what I've got so far. Um, before I get too far into this, because I've made all the inner workings necessary to do this, I chose to use the guts out of. It's this Crosley here. Now, I chose to use this because it has a few nice features that are going to make this easier. Uh, one thing it has this uh, actual analog tuner and analog volume control and four physical buttons. So we have an actual tuner here, which means I can make that needle functional. And I thought uh, these four buttons would do just fine in these holes here. Now I've got five holes to fill, so on this radio there's this little indicator LED that changes colors based on the mode. So I decided I would put that, let me get to the right tab here, in the center LED and use the other four holes for the uh, button controls the mode, uh, play, pause, previous, and next. Uh, this radio has some nice features. It's FM, Bluetooth. Uh, another really nice thing about it is on the back it actually has have an SD card, USB port, and auxiliary input. Now this little black panel here is the main board. Right behind here you have your control buttons. You have your you have your knob for the volume and you have the knob for the tuner and they use a little mechanism to actually move a needle up here. Um, that's not how I'm going to implement this. I have made this to be uh, easy to disassemble and take apart. Of the work, but um, I made holes for screws and I got some little brass kernels that I can or threaded inserts so we can hot melt in here. Uh, this is where I intend to put that uh, main board you see fit so that'll go in there but it does sound decent so mount the speaker uh, these the face I made uh, the louvers are actually open so the sound will come out both the front and the back I think I've made this sturdy enough that um, it, it shouldn't shake or vibrate too much um, this black piece is actually a mock-up of the control circuit board. On the main board, the tuner has a gear that uh, slips over it. I'm actually going to have to turn it around on the board because currently it's facing the wrong way away from the buttons. I want to just take it off the board, flip it around. I'll rewire the contacts to it so it's still where it should be and functioning just in reverse. I've got this gear, so uh, excuse me, pulley set up so I can screw it in and it'll fit right cut out for the, the slot um, on the dial itself. One of the nice uh, things about this tuner is it uh, has 180 degrees of range so if you go back to the front you'll have 88 on one side and 108 on the other as far as FM and it only has to move 180 degrees so it'll either go from here to here uh, there uh, so this is the cup because I originally been done on this Zenith um, it has a little bit of a, a bubbly glass cover um, it is recessed in uh, into the wood and is a flat dial so in order to sort of mimic that I made a cup shape so that everything will be pushed in and I can make me a, a piece of clear acrylic that's uh, bubbled up with a heat gun in order to just simulate that effect these little black boxes represent the buttons on the main board. I measured them out to make sure those are the right distance away. So I've made a little a button, springy button panel here. That's the button sticking through. I made them a little bit longer because in between to attach it and I thought I might lose a little bit of the length of the buttons. So they're a little bit longer than necessary. I shouldn't turn into an issue. The pulley here is directly attached to the tuner itself. There's another shaft that inserts to this pulley that the needle attaches to uh, that goes over top of the screw in the pulley. Uh, down here I've got my, I put a couple standoffs here so that I could bolt it in. Uh, you'll, you'll have to be able to push it through from this side, but basically I'll run a string, uh, figure eight style, 
over this pulley. Might have to wrap it twice around each and then should be able to just turn that knob and turn the tuner. Pretty much it for as far as, again, all the Crosley parts should bolt right up in here. Uh, the only real changes that need to be made are to this circuit board and I'll show you uh, on camera. But like I said, the tuner needs to be turned around. Uh, the volume control needs to be actually taken off of the board so it can be uh, attached in that hole so I'll have to run wires back to the original board. Uh, the button control has a ribbon cable that goes from down here on the bottom of the board back to the main board. Uh, I put them close enough that I should be able to just reuse the original cable. And of course the speaker up here will plug into that main board as well. Um, the only other addition I'm going to make is for the panel I've put a little hole up here that I can fit a 3 millimeter amber LED into. A uh, 5 volt I board. Um, a USB port, I should be able to get 5 volts power off of it, uh, at least enough to power one little LED so that my uh, dial will be lit up. The shell is too big for me to fit in my printer, so I'm going to have to cut it up in uh, at least a few places in order to get it to fit. Um, I really want to cut it uh, off centered so that I'm not cutting through the holes uh, for like the, the dial and the, the needle and some of the standoffs. Um, this back plate here is actually about the maximum size I can fit in my printer is a single piece. So um, the outside shell is just a little bit too big to print as one piece. Um, so it'll be fine. It'll go separate on its own. I just I have to go through and break up all these pieces into different STL files. To know this box is probably going to take a couple days to print out, um, even in the two pieces. I'd like to get it if I can. But if I can't, it'll, it'll take quite a bit longer. Other than that, a board here, it's not necessary. But it was helpful making that just to get everything lined up. I'll get my standoffs where I need to get all my spacing properly. Right, so this is that uh, control board I was talking about. So this is the actual volume control. As you can see, it's got a nut that will hold in place. So I'm going to have to desolder this and take it off the board. Uh, these are those buttons for controlling your mode and play pause, previous next and the indicator LED. And that's where that ribbon cable attaches to. Okay so this is the actual tuner. Now I'm going to have to flip it around and you can see that little screw there that holds, uh, holds the gear on. Originally it would have had this gear, see it's got a little slot in there, screw to go through. But I'm going to have to turn this around because I want this facing the same way as the buttons. So I'm just going to desolder it. I'm going to lift these prongs here and attach wires so that when I, I get it flipped over, um, I can have them go back into the same locations, just crossed over. Uh, these two outside tabs, those are just for mounting it to the board. And I'll, I'll still have to do my soldering on this side of the board. Like I said, I'll just put wires in here so I can make my crossovers for the two outer pins. That middle pin will be the same. And for the volume control here, I'll desolder it and I'll put wires in here and solder them to the pins on the knob uh, just to get it over to where I need to. And that'll be pretty much it. I'll be able to take off this original bracket for the original volume control knob. It just had a little gear in here. Let's see if I can put it in there. And when you would turn the knob, it'd turn that gear. And inside the radio itself, inside the panel cover here, it would have attached to, uh, it would have turned a little a gear shaft right in here that would have moved this uh, little dial indicator. So I don't need that anymore since I'm not going to be using it. Um, this is the main board. And that's where the other end of that ribbon cable connects to. And we've got our speaker that plugs in here. So I'm just keeping this whole piece. I made the slot in uh, my back plate of the model to just push this in and bolt it down. Um, I've got these little 
brass thread inserts and a bunch of these screws that I can just use a soldering iron to push into uh, where I've pre-designated my holes to uh, make my mounting points. And so these are the original buttons. You can see they've got this little springy piece here to allow you to push them. Now because my buttonholes are slightly different offset, I had to make my own design for this and account for that offset with the buttons, but I think it'll turn out okay. And again, like I said, this is the volume control. So these knobs I've made, they'll just, it'll take a little bit of force, but it'll, it'll push on there and stay. So yeah, that's what I've got so far. Um, I've been having a, a lot of fun with this. It's taken a long time. Uh, now, I, like I said, I printed this out several months ago. When I first made the faceplate, I printed it out with the knobs. Um, I did some smoothing with acetone in order to get this uh, crusty old effect. Um, I didn't let it completely dry after I did the acetone. Well, I actually brushed it on. Um, I let it get about 99% dry and then I lightly sprayed over it with this uh, aluminum colored spray paint, or chrome paint. And what happens is the off-gassing of the remainder of the acetone will cause the paint to bubble and blister, giving it this uh, real crusty old warm effect. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to want to decorate this up to be old pitted chrome or if I want to try and make it look like aluminum. If I go with the old pitted chrome, I'll add some uh, rust orange stains on here by blending up some paint really thin. If I'm going to go with an aluminum look, I'll... Uh, make some milky white uh, thin paint to go over certain spots to make it give that powdered aluminum look. Um, I haven't decided on that yet. Um, but yeah, there's our little speaker and there's that ribbon cable. So I'm going to get these models divided up and get printed out and hopefully I'll be able to make another update uh, when I get to assembling it.